you think that you're interested in doing something, whatever it is, go find somebody that's doing it at a high level and be their executive assistant because you get the bird's eye view from the beginning of what it's actually like to run a company. Hey, Dr. Bill here. Welcome to another Meet the Mentor. This one's particularly exciting for me because I've watched this young man grow since he was 17 years old. He's now 50. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to read a little bit about Avery's bio and then kind of go off the cuff and tell you kind of a behind the scenes story. But um, <clears throat> Avery Chernin grew up in Santa Barbara, California. Uh, since he was young, he always enjoyed thinking about how to make things run smoother and more efficiently. Uh, after attending LEAP for the first time at age 17, he came back a second time. So he's been there twice as a student, three times as a coach. And he reached out to the management of his local tennis club to see if they were interested in systemizing their operations. They contracted him to develop an operations manual, which he did and sold to them to help pay for university. Um, he had attended Occidental, then he went to USC, and when Avery was in college during the summer, one year he called me up and said, Dr. Bill, I'd like to do an internship and maybe with a company that does manufacturing and whatnot. And I was able to introduce him to a friend of mine who ran a pharmaceutical company. You can maybe talk a little bit about that, Avery. Yeah, so um, like Bill said, after my, it was my, after my sophomore year of college, I knew I wanted to do some kind of an internship. I wasn't sure exactly what I wanted to do. And so um, I just thought, well, why don't I reach out to all the people I know who are well-connected? And Bill was one of them. And so I reached out and I said, hey, I'm looking for an internship. If you know of any cool ideas, um, you know, keep me in mind. And he said, yeah, sure. Um, so then he introduced me to his friend Shaheen, who runs a pharmaceutical company, and I met with him, uh, gave him a thank you note afterwards. He was impressed by that. And um, yeah, I ended up in, interning there over the summer. I got to do all sorts of stuff. So it was a little bit about marketing, it was a little bit about finance, a little bit, I was running focus groups. It was all over the place, which was great because I didn't know what I wanted to do. Um, and so that was a really a cool summer internship, and then I went back to school. Uh, Flash forward, May, um, Avery gives me a call and says, Dr. Bill, I'd like to do something like more high tech this summer. Do you have any great ideas? I said, Avery, where are you? He says, I'm at USC. I said, I am literally less than 10 minutes away from you. Get in your car, come over here right now. I'm going to introduce you to your new boss. <laughs> now, he thought I was crazy, but I have a very good friend who I've been friends with for almost seven years, um, affectionately known as Bebop. And Bebop started a company called Hyperloop Technologies. And Hyperloop, for those of you who don't know what it is, is amazing. Elon Musk kind of made this big news flash years ago about this new technology where you basically travel in a capsule which is vacuum sealed and frictionless at about 765 miles per hour. So imagine getting in this capsule and going from Los Angeles to Las Vegas in 15 minutes. And that's what Hyperloop is developing. It's solar powered, and I'll let Avery talk a little bit more about it, but at the time, I said, Avery, get over here. Bebop had no idea I was going to ambush him. <laughs> I then grabbed Bebop from this party, sat them down, and Avery, take over. Yeah, so, uh, yeah, like Bill said, he called me up, I said, or I called him, he said, come over, I said, okay. Uh, it, it was, uh, it was at Clifton's. <laughs> we sat down and we chatted a little bit. It was very informal. Um, he asked me some interesting questions, not the usual interview questions, tell me your story, what are your strengths, weaknesses. It was, I could tell he really, he had hired a lot of people and he wanted to see if he was going to be, uh, if I was going to be working with him that he could really trust me. Um, and so we chatted for maybe 25, 30 minutes. He said, okay, why don't you come back in two weeks to our office? Um, We'll do a little more formal interview there, so we did, and we decided that uh, I would start working as his executive assistant that summer. 
uh, and if it went well, we kind of left the door open. Um, maybe I would defer a year from school and actually work with him full time. Uh, so Avery got a passport. <laughs> I, no, I had a passport. <laughs> and how many, literally, how many countries have you been to since you started at Hyperloop? Uh, 17, I think. 17 countries. Have you met any important people? <laughs> Yeah, we've met the chief a bunch of chief ministers in India, ministers of transportation of Indonesia, Malaysia, uh, India, the UAE. Um, we went to Germany, France. Uh, I was in Switzerland a, a month ago. So it's been it's been a whirlwind, and it's been a lot of fun. And how has your actual like job transition? Because you literally started off as say an executive assistant, and now it's so much bigger. Yeah, so when I started, I was I was Bebop's basically his executive assistant. I was traveling all around with him. Um, I really didn't know how to do that, nor much of anything else, but I was a quick learner and I was excited about really being able to get in there and help. And so um, it, it worked out very well. I ended up, like you said, I was his executive assistant. I was traveling all around with him. I'm gonna interject something <laughs> for a second here. When, when Avery started this position, he had never worked as an executive assistant. So, you know, we always say copy genius, find mentors. I introduced Avery to my, you know, personal assistant, Nicole, and I literally had her brief him yeah. on how to arrange travel, how to do this, how to do that. So, you know, it, it was kind of a, an on the fly learning process, right? Totally, um, and that was great. And then there's a lot that, you know, with any first job, whether you've done something or not, um, there's a learning curve, right? And so it's just about how do you kind of jump into it and tackle it and, and just, you know, go above and beyond and make the most of it and learn quickly. And, and that's, I think, all anybody can expect if, you're, if it's your first time doing something. So you start off as an executive assistant. You're following Bebop all over the world. You're meeting all these amazing <laughs> yeah, people. We ended up living in Abu Dhabi for eight months, actually, last year. And tell them why, because that um, was exciting. So we, we ended up getting a government contract with uh, the Department of Municipal Affairs and Transportation in Abu Dhabi to actually do the first real full-scale um, feasibility study. It was very comprehensive studying the ridership, the economics, the demand, the environmental impact of what it would actually be like to build a full-scale Hyperloop in, uh, in a country. And you can go online and read about Hyperloop and all that. This is the first time in all the Meet the Mentors that we actually have a visual aid. So I'm going <laughs> to have Avery explain to you what you're looking at and and this is kind of a big part of the technology of Hyperloop and how it works. So the levitation technology that we're using is something called Indotrack. We licensed it from Lawrence Livermore Labs. And what it is, is it's a passive magnetic levitation system. So if you think about like a map Which level, That basically means you float, okay? <laughs> In plain English, that means you float. So um, the way it works is you have a neodymium magnet um, that you have on, on the capsule. And then you have the track, which is either made out of aluminum or copper, but aluminum is a little bit cheaper. And as you move the capsule in the horizontal direction, you actually create something called eddy current, which creates repulsion in the vertical direction. So, so basically imagine two magnets. When you put the positive and the negative together, they attract. When you put two positive together, they repel. So basically what's happening is you have one kind of metal on the bottom of the Hyperloop, another kind of metal on the surface of the track, and as it moves, it repels more and more. Yeah, so this is actually a special kind of magnet where it has positive and negative both written into the same face of the magnet, and so it reacts pretty interesting. So this is a, a hollow um, aluminum tube. Here's the magnet, I'm gonna drop it down. And you see there's a delay, it doesn't drop through. It's actually held up in here. And if you could look in there while it was going on, it would be kind of cool. The cool thing about Hyperloop is if you look at, you know, like the big picture of, you know, what they want to do with technology, this is basically the plan. You're sitting at home and you want to go to Las Vegas. So, you know, you go online and you book your trip to Las Vegas. A driverless car comes and picks you up. 
while you're in the car, your ticket is then put into your phone and all that. You get to the Hyperloop station. You don't have to worry about parking. You don't have to worry about all that other stuff. You get to the Hyperloop station, you go through security, bam, you're on the, the Hyperloop, and then you take the capsule to Vegas and you're there in 15 minutes. Yeah, we're really trying to build a seamless end-to-end -end solution. So the thing that we're thinking about a lot is if you're able to get from LA to Las Vegas, let's say in 15 minutes or 20 minutes, but it takes you an hour to get to the station, then you haven't really solved the problem. So we're really trying to figure out how do we solve that last mile problem? How do we make it seamless so that people can go from, like you said, from their home or wherever they are, point to point, right? And what is the projected cost of a ticket from LA to Vegas going to cost? Not much. Um, we're actually gonna be the only on the ground system that is gonna be profitable. A lot of people don't know this, but every train in the world loses money. Um, none of them are profitable. The state subsidizes it. So when you pay a $30 ticket to ride the Amtrak, the US taxpayers might have to pay another 20 or $30 on top of that. So because uh, the levitation system is passive, it doesn't require energy, and because we can use the top of the tube to actually uh, put solar panels, we can create more energy than we consume and actually sell energy back to the grid. So you could think of it a lot, you could think of it kind of like a giant power station that happens to move people. So the ticket might be $5, it might be $20, it depends place to place, but it's not gonna be nearly as expensive as an airplane ticket. And it's estimated that almost 30% of the power generated from the solar panels will go back onto the grid. So that will make it a, a very profitable you know, process. Yeah, yeah, we're trying to make it totally sustainable. We're really, we're trying to invent the transportation system that we think that the 21st century deserves, right? So not something that you solve one problem, right? You make a high-speed rail, but you create 10 more because it requires energy, it cuts the land in half. So we're, we're really trying to take into account all of these different things and make something that's truly sustainable and makes sense for, for us. And so what are you doing on a day-to-day -day basis now? You're not an executive assistant anymore, you actually have a whole new position. What is that? Yeah, so now I'm doing project management, which can range from anything from being the point of contact um, for a project like a Toulouse, or there's some stuff we're doing up in um, San Francisco over in Russia that I'm the point of contact. It could be um, creating different systems and procedures internally. Right now we're doing a big um, fundraise ac actually, and so I'm in charge of making sure that all of the documents and data and all of the due diligence um, is accessible for the potential investors. Um, it, it's a little bit of everything. I, I, I will say this, being an executive assistant is a great way to learn about a certain profession. If you think that you're interested in doing something, whatever it is, go find somebody that's doing it at a high level and be their executive assistant because you get the bird's eye view from the beginning of what it's actually like to run a company. So in conclusion here, what's in the future for Avery? <laughs> Good question. Right now I'm really excited about what's going on with Hyperloop. Um, we have, we're gonna have a crazy year ahead of us with the construction of uh, the full scale prototype in Toulouse with the fundraising. So um, I don't see myself going anywhere else right now, but I see myself continuing to take on bigger and bigger responsibilities and and challenging myself in different and new ways. That's awesome. Well, on a personal note, I'm really proud of you. Um, you. I'm not your father, <laughs> but I'm as proud of you as your dad could be. You are an amazing young man, and I know that your future is bright, and I see you running you know, this company or helping Bebop run this company, and it's, it's so exciting to see. And that's what LEAP is about is helping young people like Avery learn the skills that they need to be as successful as they want to be because they don't teach that in school. You know, they teach you math and they teach you science and those are good, but learning how to be successful is even, as they say in Australia, better. <laughs> so anyhow, with that, um, I'd like to uh, thank you for watching and I look forward to seeing you next week in our next Meet the Mentor. Thank Dr. Bill, over and out. Thank <laughs> you.